Pamela, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Um, Hi. I can't find the agenda. Can you? I can resend it to you. Somehow it's not anywhere in my computer, and I have no idea what happened to it. It's not in, in, it's not in junk, it's not in anything I saved. Are you still there? I haven't lost yeah. you. Have. Okay. No, I'm yeah. here. All right. I am searching through my documents so that I can um, resend it. You found it? I see it, but it's I'm having trouble attaching it to send. Hold on. Today's one of those days when Nothing wants to be easy. Oh, I can tell by who's here what we're actually going to do in some kind of order. I so know that Ian will not be here in all likelihood. He just sent me an email. Mm -hmm. And we have me and Saren so far, and Saren has to leave. So... We won't be able to take any votes in all likelihood. We need four. We need a quorum of four. But we can have a meeting. All right, so. And I, I was gonna suggest a change in the order on the agenda. Um, Athena is joining us and she yep. um, has to leave um, a bit early. So okay, we, might we can start, do that first. Start, start with her, right. Sure. And um, we're, so. We have one of the gentlemen from the track is here, so. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, this is good. So right. some of the things that we put on the agenda will probably have to wait. Right. Okay, um, but that's we, fine. Are, we should. I know that I did just see the email from um, from Ian, but um, yeah. So Elise and Co and Cody, I I'm I don't know if they're able to join. Well, oh, Jim isn't either. Right, right. Oh no. Okay. Well, thank well. You. <laughs> so let's... Elise usually does. Yeah. Yeah, he usually Cody usually does. does. What did you say, Saren? She usually comes a little bit late. I'll take right. You're right. She usually has trouble getting in, which yeah. somehow I didn't this time. <laughs> I used. No, I didn't. I didn't use. Yeah, I used the original invitation mm -hmm. this time and not a reminder. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the reminders don't work as well. This one was very easy. So maybe I will just do that from now on. I usually just use the reminder because it's so accessible. But that's why I often have trouble, I bet. So thus far, we, um, you know, we're waiting for Elise and for Cody if they're joining. And that would give yeah. you the quorum that you need. Right. Well, so if we I could know. just wait a minute more to... Um, and um, and I will then read through the, um, the, okay. the statutory language. So, okay. 
I did not receive an email from either of them stating that they weren't coming. And neither, neither did I. Yeah. I hate to make these people wait. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem to me, well, we'll wait for the track um, presentation. Yeah, I think that's the only one where you would, if you need a vote, where, right. where right. you might ask a uh, quote. All right, well, it's 1132. I'll go ahead and read the statutory language. So. Okay. Um, oh, there's a lease. Yeah, here's yeah. a lease, yeah. Okay. Right. So one okay. to go. Right. Um, Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee, committee will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. Um, pursuant to the instructions, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. So uh, if you'd like to do a quick roll call. Then sure. At this moment, which is 1134, we do not have a quorum. Um, I am present, Myra Ross, Elise. You want to present. say you're present? I'm present. Saren. I'm trying to. Saren, we hear you, Elise. Very, yeah, very clear. Present. Saren is present. Okay. So um, we were told that Jim and Co and uh, Ian will not be present. So the only other person is Cody, um, who isn't here yet, but who often is. So, um, all right. So we're going to change around the agenda because Athena is here to spread the news about our future. Um, so would you like to tell us what's what the status of the becoming a commission is at the moment? Hi, Myra and everyone. Thank you for having me here. I'm unfortunately not able to give very much information <laughs> that's new. Um, the town manager has been away from town for the last couple of weeks and things just tend to move a little bit more slowly over the summer because people are taking vacations and so on. So uh, he's coming back this week and I'll check in with him about the status of the charge. Right now, um, we're just waiting on the town manager to give the final approval of the charge and then we can move forward with the appointment process. So I've asked the town manager's executive assistant who usually helps with the town manager appointments and getting all those going to let me know if existing members of the DAAC who would like to be appointed to the new Commission on Disabilities will need to um, fill out a community activity form or if they can indicate that they wish to continue serving and the length of service some other way. So as soon as I have that information from the town manager and his executive assistant, I can share that with members. Um, and you can either fill out a community activity form or um, let them know that you'd like to consider continue serving and uh, the length of service you're, you're uh, interested in. I remember the last time I came to your meeting, there were some members who wished to serve uh, shorter or longer terms on the new Commission on Disabilities. So um, I'm sure we'll take that into consideration when the town manager makes his appointments. Okay, and the one question that we all had at the last meeting um, was about the number of people uh, on the commission. Um, he had changed what we proposed um, and I don't know where that is at the moment. Do you? So he hasn't, as far as I know, finalized the the charge. So I can ask, is there anything that you'd like me to pass on in terms of the, the number of members for the new charge? Well, Elise and Saren, um, do you have any recommendations? Didn't we talk about maybe increasing it by two to have more representatives from people, uh, parents of disabled children, relatives of disabled people to be more inclusive, kind of? Well, the law requires it, actually. The law requires that one person be a family member of a person with a disability. 
Um, and we and, don't have such person, right? In our group. No, I don't. I mean, not that I know. Yeah. I mean, we don't know everything. I mean, you know, I have kids who inherited my disability, but I don't think that counts. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so um, we, I think we wanted nine because the statute requires that a town employee or appointed official be a mem a voting member. That's what the statute requires. And the statute requires that one person be a family member of a person with a disability. And if you're going to have seven, that cuts down to five, the number of people um, from the community who can have a disability on the committee. Okay. I'll, um, I'll, so I'll we pass wanted on. nine because we wanted more community representation. That's right. That's, that's what I remember. Understood. Yeah. So I'll pass on that preference to the town manager. Just so you know, um, it's challenging to make that argument when only three of you are in attendance today. Um, I understand. Because well, I mean, we need made the argument in writing to him through you. And I mean, it's on our original proposal. I mean, we've made the argument. So what do you want to yep, do? I understand. Um, it, you can't have a meeting with less than a quorum and with nine people, right. that's very difficult. So the council just established their charter review commission committee for uh, this year and it has nine members and it's taken me months to find a time that everyone is available to meet. So I think part of the town manager's logic in uh, wanting to keep that at seven members instead of nine is just that nine is a, an unwieldy number to gather a quorum of members. So I will pass on your preference to him. Ultimately, it will be his decision. And uh, like I said, I'll keep you yeah. posted on the um, appointment process and let you know if and when you can fill out a community activity form if that's um, the process okay. that they'd like you to take or how to indicate your preference to continue serving to either okay. Angela, his executive assistant, or the town manager has, um, himself. Um, right. And hopefully we can get those appointments through um, through that process. And then the final step will be for the council to confirm the town manager's appointments um, to the Commission on Disability. And at that point, once, you're, once members are appointed, then the... Um, the first meeting will be because you will likely have some new members. The first meeting will be an organizational meeting. You'll yeah. elect a chair and so forth as though yep. it were a brand new committee. Yep. Okay. okay. So the optics are very bad on today's meeting. True. Um, we have not had a meeting in years at which we did not have a quorum. Number one. Okay. And number two, <laughs> we only have six members because he didn't report. He did not appoint a replacement for Marty Smith, um, and that's for understandable reasons, but we can't get a quorum if we don't have full membership. So Understood. it goes both ways. I hear you. <laughs> right. I okay. understand. All, All right. right. If there aren't any other questions, I'll leave you to yeah. the rest no, that's of your great. Thank you Thank so much, you so much for, for having me. Enough. Okay. Thank you, Athena. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, we're also going to move the um, well, is there anyone from the community here for public comment? I guess would be important for us to know. So there, there is a member in the, uh, the community here, um, but I think before public comment, I would um, maybe make one other su suggestion with the order of the meeting. So uh, Jen LaFountain is here. Um, uh -huh. okay. And uh, I invited her because uh, in her role, she would be, your contact person about the fund, the funds, what's the yep. status changes. Yep. Yep. So, okay. Um, although we so will do that. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I, I think it might be maybe table the brainstorming part of the yes. discussion. Yep. But yep. Getting information from her regarding um, what your, um, what restrictions are, um, there are, if there are any restrictions on how the money is, is spent. So. Yes. Okay. Jen, All right. we'll Jen thanks for you. being here. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot of money for us to begin to work with, but it would be good to know. <laughs> sure. So I um, thank you for having me, first of all. Um, I have gone back a couple of years just to look at the parking tickets that were issued just to handicap for the handicap 
code, just to get an idea of the, um, the money that is being generated. And it's anywhere from like two to $4,000 right now. Um, so not big money, but, but it is something to start with. Um, so I don't know what other questions you have at this point. So that money does not accumulate over time. Where does it go? How much is in there? That it does. I mean, the the account that would be created for us would not evaporate at the end of the year, um, apparently according to the statute. So um, I don't know what used to happen to the money. Is it still? Where does it go? Does it go into reserve? Where does it go? Um, Free cash. My, my understanding is it's um, it's parking money, so it would be general fund under transportation. Um, but I can double check that just just to make sure I'm giving okay. you the correct information. Yeah, because we just started a fiscal year. So the FY24 money uh, is, I assume, no longer available. Um, but the FY25 money, we would start with that is what because we're not a commission yet. So um, I would assume that we would start with FY25 money. Um, but I guess that's what I would want to know for okay. sure. Okay. Anybody and... else have any questions? No. no. I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? I did. Jen, go on. <laughs> no, no, I'm just no. um I'm just making a couple notes so that way um I can get answers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Jen, can I I'm gonna add just a couple of other things I think will be helpful, which is um uh at what point after the committee is made a commission, like what would be the start date for the for the accumulation of the funds? Um, so I'm just gonna, so for example, if they're a commission um, by mid-October, would November 1 be the date from which they would start to accumulate funds? So, if, so having that information I think would be helpful. And then in one of our prior discussions, we had, um, um, confirmed that the funds, once they start to be accumulated by the commission, can be maintained and rolled over from year to year um, so that they can build towards a purchase or an expenditure. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Yep, exactly right. That's what's in the statute. That's right. what's in the, the 22G. Yeah. Oh, that's very good. Right. Yeah. So... Those are the only other thoughts that I that I that I had. And oh, one final question was, and I don't think that um, that I think I know the answer to this question, but I think it would be helpful for us to just to confirm that there aren't any restrictions on the uh, type of expenditures that are made. So fabulous, thank you. Yeah. All right. Great questions that we didn't think of. So excellent. <laughs> Well, thank you, Jen. I appreciate your taking time to be with us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now we have Robert Parent, right? Are you you're here for the discussion of the track at the high school? Yes, I am. Cool. Yes. I Good. will say that that track has been there since what, 2000? 1999? I um, believe so. Um, I have only been with the town for a year, so I, I don't know that history, to, but it's been there uh, for a okay. long time. I agree. Well, prior to that, it was a cinder track. Yeah. And when they put it in, it was this cool red rubber track. And I used to walk around it and I worked at the high school. It was a really cool thing, but I guess they don't last. And I guess also that when they put it in, they didn't think about that when you run in one direction in the afternoon, in the fall. And in the spring, the sun is in your eyes and you can't see where you're going, right? <laughs> so that's Things why they have want evolved to turn. over the years. Yes. That's why they want to turn it, right? Mm. Uh, that's certainly part of it. Yes. Okay. So you that. want to tell us the rest of it? Because we certainly. know they want to build it. We know they want to turn it. We know that there is so far not such, not totally sufficient money to fund it turned around. Is that right? Um, no, we actually have, well, we have most of the money needed to fund what is desired by the school district, but we are putting strategies in place. If necessary, there are some components of the project that could be deferred to the future if needed. 
Um, okay. So we have funding to build a track. We don't necessarily have all funding to build all the desired features associated with the track at this point. Okay, like the bleachers. Correct. Yeah, because one question I was going to ask has to do with a loudspeaker, right? I mean, I don't know how. I don't know what kind of wires they have to put in for that while they're digging up the ground. But that was my one concern. If there are going to be any people who are going to be speaking to a crowd there, I mean, you're talking about a future, right? Um, I wondered if there was any. There was no mention in your letter about any electrical component. And in the, for me, the ADA issue would be about the electrical component. Is that um, for description of what's going on on the field? Um, sometimes that would be cool to have, um, but they don't, I mean, they're not going to play soccer in, in the middle of the field. That's not what they do there, right? In the middle of the track. But um, anyway, I just, so I, I wanted to put on the table anything about electricity, sure. but you should, you know, tell us what you want to tell us. I just wanted to frame it um, right. about that. So we don't have to spend the time on the money and the, okay. Great. Uh, first, a little bit of background. I actually work for the town of Amherst. The applicant here is the school district. But in my role, I came on board about a year ago to help the town move capital projects forward. And this is one a project, obviously, that the town has a significant interest in. And therefore, I'm working with the district to, to, to try to help move the project forward. Um, with me, um, we have got our uh, project designer, Kevin Fusler from SLR International, and I see that Dave Zomek has uh, logged on as well. Um, so certainly we can jump into a couple of these items, but I think probably the best thing to do would be to have Kevin um, describe the project in general. Um, and if, yeah, Kevin is a panelist, so I believe Kevin, uh, you can share your screen for those folks that can benefit from this, the screen sharing. Um, but at the same time, Kevin is 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 prepared to fully describe what um, is presented on the screen cool. for everybody's Thank benefits. Thank you. Well, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yep. Excellent. Well, thank you for having me uh, this morning, almost afternoon. Um, as Bob <laughs> mentioned, I'm a principal landscape architect with SLR International Corporation, and uh, we have an office in Agawam where we're managing this project out of. So again, I appreciate you having me. I'll find the button and share my screen. And, and these are just the items that we submitted with our memo last week. Um, probably the best picture, just to get an idea of what's going on, is the uh, the rendering. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my computer's yes. talking. I shut it up. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. Well, please also feel free to interrupt me at any time. I prefer Q&A over just speaking. Um, mm -hmm. So what we have currently out at the uh, the high school, and as already been mentioned, it's a pretty old six lane running track with an east-west orientation that runs parallel to Mattoon Street. There are currently no accessible routes provided to the track and its uh, event areas, um, being long jump, high jump, uh, pole vault and throwing event areas. There's uh, no sidewalk connections anywhere. Um, as noted, the track surfacing and grass athletic field inside the track are in uh, poor condition to be nice and are well beyond their uh, life ex expectancy. Um, with a brand new track uh, and field facility, uh, one would expect when constructed properly about 21 years. So if this was indeed built in 1999 or around that time, um, it's just it, it, it can't be rejuvenated. So the proposed improvements are to construct a brand new um, upgraded eight lane track uh, with a preferred north south orientation, um, which is mentioned uh, reduces both solar impacts and um, wind uh, impacts to the athletes using the facility. Ah, okay. Yeah, I didn't think of that. And also okay. with spectator uh, placement, even though spectator um, improvements would be a future project, um, we, we like to orient the facility this way so uh, uh, spectators aren't staring into the sun also watching the game uh, typically held in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, so brand new track and field facility uh, at all new event areas. 
Um, it will be a new high performance grass athletic field within the middle of it. And, and currently the intention in the um, planning stages has been to be able to uh, host soccer matches, lacrosse, um, um. Fo even football on this field, um, knowing that the primary football field may still remain across Mattoon Street. Um, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So please. the inside of the track is going to be big enough for a soccer field with that, yeah, yeah. even given, even given the, 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 the place for the, uh, you know, long jump pit and all that. Yeah. So the, um, the areas in the oval of the track, we refer to the D zone given their shape uh, in, as a D um, in the North D zone, we would locate the long jump event areas and we'd provide two runways uh, running in opposite directions. Um, that helps with the efficiency of running a track meet. It allows you to run multiple events at once. Or if you have a particularly windy day, it lets you uh, run in favor with the wind. Uh, the field itself, the South D zone would be reserved for high jump. So those just receive the track surfacing. The field itself is large enough to accommodate a 210 foot by 360 foot soccer field, which is by far the biggest footprint of any sport. Um, that's yeah. about the largest size we see at a municipal high school level, um, and it's the preferred size for uh, actually NCAA. So we're actually we're taking the the uh, geometry of the track that's out there now and making it a little shorter and a little wider uh, to accommodate a full size soccer field with the proper overruns. So we want some we want a safe distance before the surfacing transitions from grass to rubber tracks surfacing. So, okay, so my question about electricity is alive <laughs> and well. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> we'll, you know, as Bob had okay. mentioned, um, we're a little lean on the budget, but um, we are proposing new LED field lighting. And if that can't happen during this phase, we would put in all the infrastructure needed for future ele electrical upgrades. Because the last thing we want to do is go back and really have to get invasive and disturb this site. Right. So there would be uh, mean, uh, provisions brought to where we sh currently show a bleacher pad. Um, we don't show one on the east side of the field, but that's being reserved for future seating. Um, one or both sides would have a, a press box um, area, which would then have your broadcast system in it. Okay. So we are working with an electrical engineer to make sure that at a minimum, the pipes are in the ground. Thank you. Yep. And I know. Because uh, as a person who can't see the game. Yes. And Elise probably couldn't see the game either. Some we'll kind of a way to have narration over the loudspeaker if it's necessary would be really cool. Or ADA even one of those. Has, oh, good, oh, sorry. Things. And uh, we're well aware of ADA's requirement also to have um, audio devices, portable ones, a certain yep. number, depending on the seating. So those provisions would be made too, although that technology is generally wireless at this time. So it's yep. just the uh, yep. the school getting the uh, the certain number to hand out for any, uh, any game or event with broadcasting. Well, there has to be a, a base. I mean, it's wireless, but it comes from yeah, a base. Right, right. The headsets are yeah. the wireless part. The, uh, the the press box, if there is one, that's where that infrastructure yeah. would be located. Fabulous. Okay, I'll shut up now. Because it's <laughs> the only thing that wasn't in your memo. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> the rest I'm, of it well, was I'm glad good. you brought it up. I appreciate okay. that. Um, I, what was brought up in the memo, in addition to the new track and field facility, uh, we will be bringing a new accessible walk down from the west parking lot at the high school. Uh, that path will follow all ADA and CMR uh, code, um, which means you know our, I, our maximum slope in the path of travel is going to be about 4% on this site, but most are going to be even flatter than that. No walkway will have a cross pitch of more than 2%. We always designed 1.5% uh, to make sure that we have that tolerance in there. So a, a new walk will wind down from the parking lot on the northeast side. The uh, track and field facility itself will be fully encompassed in a loop uh, uh, sidewalk that will meet all code requirements. Um, this walk will bring spectators to the future bleacher pad and also out to Mattoon Street where we're proposing a new walk. The uh, Western parking lot will be restriped. A portion of it will be remarked to include two new accessible parking sp spaces, one van and one normal. Uh, and the that will 
complement three existing spaces that are already there. Um, so this site will go from being not accessible all, at all to, to fully accessible via walkways. Um, we did talk about there is no spectator seating at this time, but it's the accommodations are made. If and when grandstands are put in, they will have the uh, required access ramps and a press box will be made accessible as well. Um, and I think I hit on everything. We will have a new scoreboard. And while there aren't provisions uh, specifically for scoreboards, we're treating it as signage, which just means the uh, the visual distances and the letter heights and the 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 character heights will all be um, designed well beyond the requirements of ADA and CMR. So with that, that is my presentation. I did include in our package a typical um, accessible routes plan that we would prepare for any uh, public school construction project. Um, and if you can see it, you know, the blue line just shows how we're connecting all the elements of the site uh, via accessible routes. Um, there will be some new curb ramp uh, curb ramps dropped in. No, no official uh, technical ramps with uh, requiring handrails, but curb cuts um, will be provided at all street and driveway intersections. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Nope. Stop sharing. No. Yeah. Um, I have a couple actually. Um, if I had watched the Paralympics on TV, I would probably know this. But, um, you know, there easily could be uh, disabled athletes involved with this track. So this is a stupid question, but I assume that there is no slope except the tiny bit for drainage on the actual track. That is correct. Um, this track we currently designed with a one and a half percent cross pitch. Um, the governing body of high school athletics in this country require a running track to have a cross slope no greater than 2%. Um, and then in the path of travel, it's, it's, it's a fraction of a percent. And I assume it pitches so that the outside lanes are slightly lower than the inside lane uh, just pitch, for drainage? Pitches outside to inside and in, at that interface between the grass field and the running track, there'll be a quarter inch wide drainage slot that Got will it. accept the water from the track before it okay. enters the field okay it can't be flat because otherwise you're going to have water. you'd have puddling yes right. and right. definitely don't want that in a freeze thaw uh nope. environment like new england yep yeah. okay so um the cross and um i mean it sounds cool to me do you know when the what the timeline for construction is so the plan right now is we're just starting the uh, local permitting process. Um, and thank you for being our first meeting. Um, but we yeah, hope without to get... a quorum, we're not going to do you any good. But uh, well, it's OK. <laughs> it, it's it's, it's it, the process has begun. Um, so we have a few commissions to go through and get approvals. Um, we hope to have that done this fall into early winter, but by the towards the end of this year, um, at which time we would wrap up design and go out to bid um, for a competitive bid to uh, general contractors to build this. And then the goal would be if budgeting's in place that um, it, as soon as they allow us, we would be out there probably, typically projects in New England start just after the end of the spring sports season. So that's what we're looking at right now because we know oh, everyone- so you think you're going to be building next summer? That, it, that would okay. be ideal. Yes. That would, yeah. Okay. Um, no other questions from either of you. I'm not an athlete, but I mean, I certainly worked with enough kids who are. So, um, um, what what are you? Oh, no other questions. Sarah and Elise, put on your no. spectator spectator hat. Um, and we don't have any spectator in this project anyway. So I assume when the spectator, when the bleachers, and all those things are uh, proposed, that'll come back to us. Because that that will have ADA issues as well. Yeah, uh, in Massachusetts, uh, it goes above and beyond um, just the uh, ADA code when it yep. comes to bleachers and and in press boxes. So we're well aware of okay. what's required, and um, it does add a lot of money to the cost of that infrastructure. But you know that's why we're phasing this portion in. Okay, 
interesting about the press box is why a press box what's the ada issue that you have to go beyond for a press box all press boxes in massachusetts no matter elevation or size have to be ada accessible ada yeah. uh 2010 ada code federal code states if you're under 500 square feet you do not need to be on an accessible route so you see, uh, a, lot of, you see a lot of small press boxes in other states got it Okay. All right. Because you could easily have people with disabilities who want to be working in the press box. Absolutely. It's not just about spectators. It's about workers. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. Good luck. Thank you. No, I think it's great. And I, um, I'm i surprised they didn't think about the North-South. I mean, I didn't ever think about it either until they decided they wanted to turn it. And I never thought about the wind, but of course, that's completely logical. Except that the winds all can come from the north. Well, it's more, it's winds, mostly solar. The winds can, you know, they yeah. can do anything. Yeah. yeah. No, I figured I, as soon as I heard about this change, I thought, oh, my God, of course, you're running right as, at that hour of the day. You're running right into the sun half of the time. Yep. Yep. You know. Okay. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, good luck. Pleasure. We Thank cannot you. take a vote of support because we do not have a quorum for the first time in the six years I've been on this committee, five years. Okay, thank you. Um, procedurally, I don't know if if Meyer, if if you can help or if Pamela can help. Will we have to meet with the DAC again? Do you believe to get any type of feedback from the um, committee, or or what might the process? Be? If you need our support, if it turns like you turns out that you do, I don't know why you would really but um we cannot take a vote so you might i mean you might come back for five minutes and you might i mean you gave us a pretty good proposal the only thing that wasn't there was the electric unless i missed it but it wasn't right it was not no. okay no. we could we um, could easily amend the uh, memo to address that okay and um, um dave zomek has his his oh, uh, hand up, okay so. dave Go ahead. You have a solution, I'm sure. <laughs> Hi, Myra. Uh, Hi. Nice, to, nice to see you all today. Um, I guess in answer or or in response to Bob's question, uh, this is going through site plan review, correct, Bob? That is correct. So typically the planning board does look for some feedback okay. from the DAAC. So I think okay. that's where Bob, I, I, I presume that's okay. where Bob was going. Yeah. So getting some feedback from you all, you know, at a future meeting, maybe it wouldn't require another presentation, but getting some sort of a simple memo or something that said okay. you have reviewed the project and, and you support it, or I don't want to put words in your mouth, yeah. but something that, because I think the planning board will ask us as staff and, uh, oh, so did you go to DAC and what did they think of, of the project? Okay. Thank All you. All right. Then we'll have to put it back on the agenda. Um, and it should be sooner rather than later because they want to go out to bid in the winter. Right. That's Correct. the, the yeah. yeah. So um, I'm very sorry we don't have a quorum. I was informed like 15 minutes before the meeting that one person wouldn't be here. And our membership is down by one because um, we are lacking an appointment. So it's harder to get a quorum. Right. Um, I did just see, I already have it in my calendar for next month at this time. So okay. I'm more than that happy to come be, back and discuss yeah, the project. Yeah. Right. That would be yeah. November 13th. October. No, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong month. October 8th. <laughs> October 8th is indeed the second Tuesday. You're right. No, that's not right. Today is the 10th. That would be the October. It would be the 14th of October. October 8th. No, it is, it is October no. 8th. It Wait. is October 8th. It's the second Tuesday. Oh, because Correct. I'm thinking about November because of the elections on the 5th. I'm so mixed up. I'm so sorry. October 8th. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right. I got home. Um, I think it's November next month, which I don't like that month at all. So I don't know why I think that. Okay. <laughs> it gets dark in November. I don't like November. Anyway. Okay. Um, thank you so much. I'm very sorry about the quorum. We will put it back on October 8th. And we will um, send you any feedback. Excellent. But if you thank could you. send us the re the amended menu, 
amended memo. That would be great. Thank you. You got it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so where are we? Um, so, um, I'm just going to uh, interrupt for a second. Uh, Dave, you still have your hand up. And um, I don't know if you have another comment or whether you're uh, or not. He might have turned his camera. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So he does not have another comment. His hand went down. Um, okay. And he has okay. left us. So okay. what's left on the agenda um, was the discussion about the site visit to Pray in Triangle Street, the okay. um, um, Nassau County Mass Band. And yeah, and Ian isn't here, so I don't think there's anything we can even do about that without him bringing And, and it's pretty outrageous, the, the article that was in the newspaper. Yeah, uh, is pretty unbelievable. Not proud to have grown up there, have to say. Mm -hmm. um, and then the but... final final item is a uh, review of the website for accessibility. Right. Okay, so the website thing, I was just going to suggest that we all look at the website. Mm -hmm. um, and we all try to think about what should be on it that isn't on it and what shouldn't be on it because it's outdated that is on it um so i thought that would be a project because the homework we did for this month worked out pretty well we actually got guilford see how i segued into the other item i got <laughs> i got guilford um we got guilford to meet with us elise was there pamela was there pat was there philip was there my husband was there and I was there, and Guilford was there. It was like a party. So, Saren, you're the only one who wasn't there. I know, I so, know. <laughs> so what? What we um, we did a walk around the from you know the we essentially walked around what the work around was going to be because of what the roundabout did to the intersection, mm. and we showed him some of our concerns. Um, some of the concerns were having to do with um, visual, lack of visual identification of driveways um, and garage entrances, um, such that Elise's dog didn't um, even I, know to stop. Can, can I speak? Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I, ju I just... I need to be able to describe it because it's my situation. Yeah. Um, instead of somebody else. Um, my dog could not, she's trained to stop at curves and elevations, you know, change in elevation. And there was no indication of when those curves were coming up. There was no tactile. It was like all one level. And she just blew right through them as if there was a, you know, continuous. So hmm. I could have gotten hit by a vehicle. <laughs> hmm. Yep. Yeah. And I could have too. There's no and there's no right. tactile indicator and there's no visual indicator. If no. you had seen a bright yellow stripe on the sidewalk with another one coming up 15 feet away, you probably would have vis you know, low vision people would have seen that, but it's not there either. Yep. I could have told my dog, you know, to the curb because I would have seen the yellow stripe and I would have, you know, given her, you know, if, she, you know, even though she's supposed to stop there, I would have given her a bit more of a cue. Yeah. So there were a couple of those places, Sarah, and one on East Pleasant, the, the most jarring one was on East Pleasant. Mm -hmm. um, there were some that were in the parking lot on Prey Street. There, there's that sidewalk that goes from Triangle and Cottage on Prey Street and turns right angle toward East Pleasant. And that sidewalk is continuous, but it goes against some parking lots for which there is no uh, demarcation of any kind that mm -hmm. you are no longer on a sidewalk or that you're 
like the grass line ends, there's no separation between the parking lot and the sidewalk. There isn't there isn't nope. anything there. So you can't nope. tell that you're on a sidewalk for a parking lot. And I don't know if Elise could tell that, but I'm sure there was no, no stripes there either. I, you know, I could sort of tell it, but I'll tell you if I were, if it were nighttime, no, forget it. I yeah. mean, it really has yeah. to be there. Yeah. So some of the problem can be solved with paint for uh, low vision people. Some mm -hmm. of the problem is more that there has to be some kind of a tactile marker. And Guilford said that he didn't like domes. And I guess that's too bad. Um, um yeah, but it was too bad. So that was that was one thing that we need to look out for. The other thing that um on Triangle Street on the south side, there is a long space of sidewalk. How long would you say that is, Pamela? 10 to 15 feet, I would say, that has no sidewalk at all. It's grass and dirt. Um and he said that it's somebody else's problem to fix it because it had to do with a light pole that was fixed or that was moved. Myra, we've lost your audio for a few for a few seconds. Oh, you lost me? Okay. Do you hear me now? Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, we hear you. Can you hear me? You can hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. I can't hear anyone else. So maybe it's my audio that's <laughs> problematic. <Okay. laughs> Wait, can anyone else hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Well, Elise, do you know how big that missing piece of sidewalk was? It was not, it was not tiny. There was no way a wheelchair could go through there. It was no. dirt and grass. No. And it's it, supposed it, to be sidewalk. It wasn't, yeah, it doesn't matter what size. I mean, it, it, I don't remember the size, but I remember it was inaccessible. Yeah. Totally. And And he didn't seem like it was his job to fix it. That was the impression. Yeah. I, um, so yeah. I, you who, know, did he uh, uh, say who we should contact with to have it fixed? Well, he said that he has been um, negotiating. It's not been a hot button issue for him with the people mm. whose job it is to fix it because they tore it up to move a light bulb or something. I'm not exactly, it happened a long time ago. It's been that way for years, mm. maybe more than a year. Anyway, much, much more than a year. Um, and he said that it it was the, the job of the people who created the hole to fix it. And um, it wasn't a high priority. We told him that it needed to be. And I don't know where it's gone from there. He's, I mean, he's DPW. Isn't he supposed to oversee that stuff? Whether it's a hot issue or not, I mean, you would think it is brought up to his issue. attention. You know, you you would, you would think. I mean, it's his job. <laughs> All right, I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you said it all. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason I did not accept a ride home because I knew I couldn't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I should. Talk. All right. Well, there we go. Um, I, I, um, I really was a little. I'm hopeful that he heard us. Um, <laughs> Philip, you were there too. Are you there? Here, yep, here, I'm still? here. Okay. So you heard him say that, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I don't know whether he has made any overtures to the company he did not name whose job it is to fix it. Um, but it would be really good for us to find out. Pat was there. Um, and oh, I yeah. guess we can we can ask her to try to find out. She's not here. Um, but we I can send her a note asking her to find out um, what the status of the broken sidewalk thing is but anyway i felt like i felt like we showed him what the problem was um i don't know how much he internalized about it um do you have an opinion philip or elise or pamela 
I got the same feeling you did, Myra. I agree. Uh, Pamela is having some connection issues, so I don't know if she is able to speak or not. Um, the impression that I got was also of that, especially on that little side speak um, part there. Um, but uh, in terms of going around, now we're going through where the spoke is and then on the um, front part of East Pleasant where Kendrick Park would be across there. I think yeah. he was receptive and I think the walkthrough that we all did um, to see kind of the inaccessibility, if you will, that um, was present. I think he very much, I could see that he was seen, oh, okay, I need to rethink some stuff or at least consider something, so. Okay, yeah. good, because I can't read facial expressions and so I had no idea what he heard and what he didn't. <laughs> yeah. Well said. Okay, so I guess our next move, I don't know. Um, no, Pamela's sort of computer problem. So I don't know if, I don't know the protocol issues. I don't know if she should speak. I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Computer stuff. Um, All right, I'm, I'm back. I oh, hope you are there. You can hear me? You came yeah, back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, it looks like I was able to, to figure out for the time being what was going on with my <laughs> speaker. So I am back. So we're trying to figure out, um, Philip thought that Guilford benefited from the walk around um, and that he understood more what the issues were about um, physical accessibility. Um, and I don't know what the protocol should be about finding out what what is being done about that missing piece of sidewalk that he says isn't his responsibility and about the visual and tactile things that are um, that he now knows about. So his, um, if I recall correctly, his suggestion was that um, we, uh, meaning the Disability Access Advisory Committee, send in a memo or request to town council so that he would then be um, requesting that the town manager direct him to make those repairs. Um, um, and uh, th then he would then proceed on because they weren't uh, initially part of his budget, but if there was a special request or there were, um, this was, um, um, something that he was being asked to do by the town manager, then there there might be a way for the town council to provide additional funding for it. I think that that issue of the of sidewalk that was destroyed by the um, whatever company was involved in and doing that work, you know, it's almost as if the town and the company are in this uh, uh, battle of uh, to see who's going to do it first to um, so at the town I think would have could although uh, I won't say that I'm saying this as a formal legal opinion but I think the town could expend the money and then um, seek reimbursement from the company and I think what uh, what Guilford was uh, trying to do was to have the other company directly pay for the cost of repairing that sidewalk. And so they're, they're sort of the stalemate, I would say at this point. But um, if I recall correctly, and, it, and those of you who were there, if, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, his expectation is that this committee would send in um, a memo to the town council formally <laughs> requesting that certain actions be, that the town manager make sure that certain actions are taken by the superintendent of the Department of Public Works. Does anybody else remember okay. that case? That could easily be what he did, what he said. Um, so my memo is not addressed correctly. Um, well, it goes to Paul and Lynn and Pat. Right. But I CC'd, I put the, I did it backwards. I sent it to Paul. Okay, I mean, I didn't send it, but I wrote it to Paul. Yeah. Now, we don't have a quorum, so we can't even agree to send it. 
this is a problem. Um, so one thing that we that we might consider would be to um, schedule a special meeting that's just an you know uh, an hour to to address the two things that you weren't able to vote okay. on. Yeah. Okay. Good. good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we just do that? Um, well, or let's we, see. Or could we just send like a message? This is, uh, please let us know if you approve this or not, or that kind of a thing. Could we do it online? I well, don't think we can do that. Yeah, we're, no. we're not allowed to no. take votes online. They have to be done in a public in person. Okay. Right. So, um, so maybe... What are you, what are people thinking about next Tuesday at eleven thirty? Just oh. for an hour or at any Just, time? Oh, Maybe we need to pick a time and then we can just adjourn this meeting. We can have them take a vote on the track and we can um I'll, I'll amend my memo to go to the town council mm -hmm. telling them what we did, what we determined. I'll add a piece about the uh, the problem with that piece of sidewalk because I wasn't specific. Mm -hmm. I think I alluded to it, but I wasn't specific. Okay. Next Tuesday is okay for me. Yeah, let's keep it at the Tuesday. It's easier for me to remember. Yep. My week is crazy. All right. So so I can I, meet the other members of the committee today and just state that because of the lack of quorum, we're, we're hoping that they would be able to meet at 1130 uh, next Tuesday to take a vote on two matters. Right. Yeah. It shouldn't take long. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you could do that, that would be great. Okay, thank you. All right, so all of us can do Tuesday at 11.30, mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll get at least one more person who can do Tuesday at 11.30. Yes. I don't know how God long you is away. Um, Ian should be available. I don't know if Jim is away for a while. I don't know. I don't know either. Okay, all right, why don't we try for that? We'll see if they can do it. Um, the, the piece about the website was just something that it would be, I think, good for us to examine. And so for the next month, I think we should talk about that. Okay. Um, I also was going to ask, would you like me to invite the new communications director to attend the October meeting? The new communications director. So she, um, uh, Samantha, Giffen, and she took the position that Brianna Sundrin used to have. So she would be the person who would oh, be- Oh, she's a website person. Right, exactly. Okay, thank you. I'm like, <laughs> there's sometimes they call them web webmasters. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know what a communications director is anymore. Yeah. All right, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, she also manages um, social media as well. So, and communications like throughout got it. the town. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that would be sort of cool, but we would need to all do the homework, right? So mm -hmm. we'd have to spend a little bit of time on the website thinking if I were a new comer to Amherst and I wanted to know what might be available for me to you know, what I might need or who I might contact or anything like that. Um, what would I want to know? And that's not an easy question. Putting stuff on a website is very hard because you, you don't, you don't know what should be there until you can't find it. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and at least for me, that's the issue. You can't, you can't tell what's wrong with it until you need to find something. And then you go, oh yeah. Anyway, this is um, I think the Amherst. Should... I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm just clarifying for myself. This is the Amherst website? 
yeah Amherst. there's a <laughs> if you go to the website there's a place that has like committees okay so it's at amherst.gov amherst ma ma yes. oh, okay yeah i can um i you can, can send us the link to the to the website when i okay. send the email and one other thing oh, would be if you'd like to have the discussion first amongst yeah. yourself we could wait and ask um samantha to come to the november meeting so she'd good idea okay. <laughs> yeah yeah that's, that's good. a much better idea yeah we don't want to look stupid yeah we want to figure out because we haven't done this and we need to do it okay so we should look at it and we should try to figure out what we want to see there or what is outdated um, and make some recommendations. And then we can have her come in and then we can talk about it. And then we can talk about it from the visual perspective, as well as from the auditory perspective, as well as from the information perspective. Okay, good. Yeah, I like that. Okay. All right. So I think, do, does anyone have anything else we need to talk about? We don't need to talk about the Nassau County because it's, I don't know what we could do about it anyway, but he's no. here. I mean, he's not here. Um, and maybe he'll have a recommendation. I don't know. I mean, he did meet with, um, what's her name? Lindsay Sabadosa. Um, so I don't know what came of that. Anyway. Okay. Uh, All right. Pamela, so, your computer is not working again. I mine is it? Talk. Pamela's computer is not working again. It seems like oh. she's trying to talk, but we cannot hear her. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. uh, the other uh, thing, Myra, is that you still do have an audience member in um, attendance, and you did not. Oh, give. I didn't know not I did. Myra, I need to go. Okay. Well, then we only have two people. So okay. the audience, Bye. thank you, Sarah, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thank okay. you. Yes. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh, okay. Boy. So I don't know who's in the audience, but we only have two people. So it would be better if we wait until the next meeting unless, I mean, there's nothing we can do. We can hear something. Who's in the audience? Um, if the audience member would like to speak, if you could please raise your hand and I will let you in. Okay. You got a hand risen. I'm going to bring them in. Because the, the, I mean, we had the, the, um, whatchamacallit, open was a while back, but okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can. Okay. I, I don't see. I, it's Rob Evely again. I'm yeah, the digital. Hi. Digital Thank you for, yeah. You know, we no. should put this on an agenda. We really should do that. And that really has something to do with our website discussion, actually. Oh, yeah. And that, so I'm just checking in real quick, just because I saw it on the agenda review of um, the committee website for accessibility. And that perked me up for sure. Oh, well, um, we just we just want to make ourselves begin to do that. Right. No, so, that sounds great. And you're taking steps and there's a new communications manager, it sounds like. And um, yeah, I, I, I hope to be around for the next meeting also. Um, and, you know, and maybe I can contribute some thoughts on um, what, what I'm tying this to, I, I believe, is kind of there's the, uh, the ADA 504 transition plan and what it says a town might do, right, about about website accessibility. And perhaps everything's in place and fine. Um, but I'd be curious to see how it, it works with a new manager of communications. And um, and just then again, I saw it on the agenda that you were looking maybe at the accessibility of specifically your committee's website. And, and that, you know, that that interests me. And I, I really, I, yeah, I, thank I, you. I get excited about that stuff. So, so I confess to not knowing what's in the town ADA 504 transition plan regarding the website. In fact, I don't know that that's been paid a lot of attention to. We tried at one point with downtown um, with the traffic lights and it didn't go very well. Um, but 
since then, and for a lot of other reasons, things are moving slowly about the traffic lights. So, um, but we didn't really look at anything else. Do you happen to know what's in the transition plan? I do. <laughs> you do. do. Can you actually send that to Pamela Young, who is our liaison, um, who can't speak right now because her computer yeah. is dead? <laughs> no, it says she's muted, but I know it doesn't make a difference if she unmutes. It still is not working. So. <laughs> um, but it's Young P. E yeah, no, we, we, I've, I've sent some emails. You, you have it, okay. Before. So, so if you could send it to her, she yep. could send it to us, and that would be fabulous. I would really appreciate that. Okay, sounds great. No, and I really appreciate just the idea to say, look at website accessibility on any agenda anywhere is great news, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, so we want to talk about um, we want to talk about accessibility. We want to talk about content. I mean, the whole website thing is so complicated. It is so hard to write a good website. You almost never see a good one. Um, it, from the vis from the blindness perspective, you almost never see a good one. Fair enough. Um, and, you know, I go back to my working days. I'll just say this, the ACT, the test, you know, those people who do the other yep. tests other than the SAT, Yes. The ACT had the most wonderful website at le like 15 years ago. It was so easy. You could find everything. It was beautifully organized. It worked extremely well with speech, unlike the College Board website, which was a disaster. And somebody rewrote the ACT rep website, and you couldn't use it anymore. So that's what happens to good websites sometimes. Well, I like to say with technology, if it ain't broke, it doesn't have enough features yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, yeah, that's poss possibly it. But th that one had a lot of features. They were incredibly easy. It was okay. the best website I've ever seen. And whoever wrote it broke it, rewrote it, broke it. Yeah, they added more features. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, I, I'll, anyway, I'll thank you. Now I'll stop talking. Um, but but great. Again, really glad to see website accessibility being brought up, and especially with the new rules from you know from mm -hmm. DOJ on this is yep. uh, the the time is now to keep, yep. keep addressing this more than ever. So yep. All right. All right. Thank All right. you Thanks. so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Okay, folks, I think we need a motion to adjourn, which would be me which from from Elise. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll move that we adjourn. <laughs> and I'll second it. But we can't even vote. So we're just gonna sign off. This is so okay. embarrassing. This has never happened before. No, and it hasn't. Hopefully it won't here. happen again. All right. Bye. See you next week. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.